Going missing while at work is pretty unusual, unless you're a scientist, that is. As a scientist, your job might involve the exploration of remote, wild places to discover new and unknown things, which means that history is full of stories of explorers, archaeologists, geologists, and even physicists who ventured into places where few people have gone before and never came back. Vladimir Alexandrov wasn't just any physicist. He contributed to the mathematical model for nuclear winter, or the terrifying concept of the descending darkness that would accompany full-scale nuclear war. In 1985, the Soviet physicist vanished while visiting Madrid. So what happened? There's a possibility that Alexandrov may have disappeared on purpose after defecting from the Soviet Union, which wasn't exactly known for being open-minded at the time. Others theorize that the whole nuclear winter idea might have been heavily promoted by Russia in order to convince U.S. activists to protest America's nuclear weapons program, potentially crippling America's ability to defend itself in a nuclear war. Was Alexandrov kidnapped by the KGB because he was planning to tell the world that nuclear winter was less likely than he had originally proposed? We still don't know. Not all disappearances are related to controversial scientific theories. Sometimes, as was the case of Soviet-born mathematician and Penn State professor Boris Weisfeiler, things just went terribly wrong while hiking. In late 1984, Weisfeiler got tired of the cold winters in Pennsylvania and decided to go hiking in the Chilean Andes, never to return. The last time anyone saw or heard from Weisfeiler was in January of 1985. Not long after that, his backpack was reportedly found next to a river, and Chilean authorities concluded he drowned while trying to cross. Like all great mysteries, though, there were people who said otherwise. In 2000, documents came to light that suggested Weisfeiler might have been abducted and murdered after wandering too close to Colonia Dignidad, a cult-like camp run by expatriated Nazis, which had served as an internment and torture center for dictator Augusto Pinochet. The evidence was damning enough that eight people were arrested in 2012 and charged with the kidnapping, but the judge eventually closed the case and set everyone free, citing statutes of limitations. The mystery remains unsolved. Extracurricular hiking tragedies aside, the most common way for a scientist to vanish is in the line of duty. That's what happened to Peng Jiamu, a biologist at the Shanghai Institute of Biochemistry and Cell Biology. In 1980, Pang led an expedition into the Lopner Desert, a dangerous landscape full of soft riverbeds and shifting sand dunes, which made for treacherous traveling conditions. On June 17th, Pang's team signaled the army that they needed a rescue as they'd run out of supplies. Soon after that, Pang walked out of camp, leaving only a note saying that he was going to look for water. He never returned. Chinese leaders diligently searched for Pang for three months, sending planes, helicopters, police, dogs, and hundreds of soldiers to scour the landscape. Pang had completely vanished, except for some footprints and a candy wrapper. Even though Pang had been exploring the area since 1956 and was fairly familiar with it, Pang's colleagues don't seem to find his disappearance that mysterious. The Lopner landscape could swallow someone up without a trace. Hillsides would sometimes collapse, burying everything nearby and an avalanche of shifting sands. Other expeditions into Lopner have found bodies, though to date, none of them have turned out to be Pang. Rumors persist that Pang was dying of cancer and wanted to disappear on his own terms, or that he was murdered by a teammate after a dispute over resources, and even that he defected to the United States from communist China. But Pang has never been found. New Zealand cardiologist J.C.P. Williams noticed that a lot of kids visiting his practice shared some characteristics. In addition to their cardiovascular problems, they also had similar facial features and were especially friendly and outgoing. Today, we call this genetic disorder Williams syndrome, but most people don't realize that the doctor who identified it disappeared less than 10 years later. But was it intentional? Michael King's book, Wrestling with the Angel, says Williams was living with New Zealand poet Janet Frame in the late 1960s. But when he proposed marriage in 1969, Frame literally ran away. By the time she finally returned a week later, Williams had vanished. But maybe he wasn't technically gone? It was reported that friends met him in Austria in the mid-1970s. He renewed his passport in 1979, and even though his sister had the High Court of New Zealand declare him a missing person in 1988, there's evidence he might have been alive as recently as 2000, when Williams allegedly asked not to be included in Frame's biography. If those things are true, then Williams is likely one missing person who would really just prefer to remain missing. Thomas A. Much was the Associate Administrator for Space Science at NASA and the author of two books on the geology of the Moon and Mars. He was also involved in the Viking mission to Mars as the lead for the Lander Imaging Team. 
1980, he vanished. Much disappeared while descending Mount Nun, a 23,000-foot peak in the Kashmir Himalayas. After slipping, Much reportedly fell hundreds of feet down the slope of the mountain, losing his glasses and hitting his head in the process. Maybe worst of all, he lost a crampon from one of his climbing shoes. He couldn't make any progress without the device, so one of his two companions went to grab a spare from camp. When he returned, Much was gone, leaving only his ice axe behind. After his disappearance, NASA honored him by renaming the Mars lander the Thomas A. Much Memorial Station. Much's body was never recovered. Acclaimed anthropologist Dor Bahadur Bista was a professor at a university in Nepal who was known for his work with traders in the upper Kalangandiki River Valley. He was also reportedly fond of trekking off alone into the wilderness where he could conduct his research in private. In the weeks before his 1995 disappearance, friends said he was upset over some negative responses to a book he'd just published. He'd also apparently angered a group who was opposed to his efforts to help empower lower-class Nepalese, and defamatory articles were published about him in local papers. He confided to one friend that he felt threatened and was considering leaving Nepal for his own safety. A few weeks later, he was seen boarding a bus. After that, he was never seen again. Hopefully, that bus took him somewhere safe, but we may never know. In 2007, Turing Award-winning Microsoft researcher Jim Gray launched his 40-foot sailboat in sunny weather on a voyage that was only supposed to take one day. When he didn't return that evening, his wife reported him missing. The Coast Guard searched 132,000 square miles of ocean off of San Francisco for four days, but found no trace of Gray's boat. His friends and colleagues weren't about to give up, though. The Collective Geniuses wrote software to help volunteers sift through thousands of satellite images in search of Gray's red and white vessel, and they enlisted the help of Google Earth satellites. The NASA Ames Research Center even volunteered to steer a high-altitude aircraft over the search area. Despite the technology and the tenacity of the participants, the weeks-long search turned up nothing, so Gray's wife hired an underwater search team to scan the ocean floor. That search also turned up nothing. Some people think the boat sank and fell over the continental shelf, where it would be impossible to find. But there aren't any good theories to explain why the boat might have gotten into trouble in the first place, especially considering the good weather and its captain's extensive experience. Five years later, Gray's wife had him declared missing but presumed dead. Microsoft continues to give an award named in his honor. Jim was a unique person that, that he really was a networker. He could create communities and bring lots of disparate peoples together in July 1994, biologist Ernst Preisner went out into the Bavarian Alps by himself to check some insect traps. Like everyone else on this list, he was never heard from again. Preisner was a well-known scientist who was interested in insect pheromones and was actively collaborating on some important works on the subject. After he failed to return home, search parties were organized, but also could not find him. His colleagues concluded he'd met with some kind of accidental death and declared it an irreplaceable loss for science, and countless joint studies still being conducted. His samples and studies were quickly divided up between other scientists, and with no other clues about where he ended up, that seems to be the end of the story. Percy Fawcett was a geographer and archaeologist searching for the city of Z, a lost civilization he believed was hidden somewhere in the Amazon. In 1925, he entered the jungle with two companions, two laborers, and a ton of supplies. After a final letter to his wife sent a month after entering the jungle, he was never heard from again. No one could believe he'd just vanished without a trace, and rumors and stories persisted for many years after his disappearance. Local tribes recalled stories of seeing them, while others admitted to killing the explorers decades prior and keeping their bones. While those bones didn't turn out to belong to Fawcett, more reports of various murders persisted, and still more stories about how they either starved to death or died from illness. Some of Fawcett's possessions were later discovered, but it was determined that they were from other expeditions. Even more complicated is Fawcett's last letter, in which he may have intentionally given his wife inaccurate coordinates for his last known camp, in order to prevent others from finding the City of Z. Interestingly, his lost City of Z kind of turned out to be a real thing. Since his failed expedition, archaeologists have discovered huge cities of stone fortified by walls hidden within the jungle, not too far from where he disappeared. You don't become an explorer if you don't want to discover new things, but sometimes with discovery comes great danger. Russian geologist Vladimir Rusinov thought that his discoveries, studying the coal potential of Svalbard, required passage through the treacherous northern sea route. After a successful expedition into Svalbard in 1912, Rusinov and 11 of his crew decided to split off and sail to the Pacific Ocean via the northern sea route. 
which was by all accounts a dangerous idea, given the small size of his ship and crew. The last communication from the ship was a telegram on September 27, 1912, in which Rusinov said he planned to sail east across the Kara Sea. A couple ships went out in search of Rusinov in the years that followed, but were unsuccessful. It wasn't until 1937 that a few personal effects of the crew were found on one island off of Siberia. A wooden column bearing the ship's name, Gercules, was found on another island. The ship itself was never found, and neither was the crew. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about some of the weirdest stuff in the world are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.